Hello there, good morning everybody. How are you today? Um, hi Megan and Colette and Princess Cheese and Debbie and oh, hi Brian and Karen and Lynn and Susan and Laura and Leslie and Stephanie on YouTube and on Facebook we've got Mandy and Sheila. So I think that's a bit behind. Um, let me just refresh Facebook and see who else is there. Uh, Zoe and Kerry and Lisa and Suzanne, hello to you too. Where in the world are you? What's your weather like where you are? What, what are you sewing? I'm bombarding you with questions. Uh, morning Diane and Angela. Um, Facebook's giving me a spinny circle at the moment, so sorry I'm not saying hello to you at the moment. Um, oh, there we go. Wendy, Leslie, Windy and Preston. It's lovely here. Um, morning Claire, morning Mickey, morning Yasmin and Jan and Julie and Sue, and Tracy, and Carol, and Judith, and Anne, and Jackie. I'm sorry I've missed anybody. I've got, I've got quite a bit behind with, um, with Facebook there. It's cold in Melbourne, Australia, apparently. Lovely here. Uh, morning, sunnyish London. Oh, I hope it stays sunny in, in that direction of the country, because um, Kim's gone to the seaside today. So let me know what it's like in Brighton, if you're down there. So hopefully it's going to be nice and warm. It's warm and sunny in Leamington Spa, apparently, says Rosalind. And Northampton. Hello, Amanda. She's in Sweden. Hi, Sue, Lynette, Joanna. Now, I'm going to make a bag in a bit, um, which I've, I've not made before. Um, so I don't know what it's going to turn out like. Um, but I thought I'd do something a little bit different with the handle on this one. And I will be doing a YouTube video um, afterwards. So that'll be uploaded later on this afternoon if you want to watch it without the chat. Um, we're going to have a look at the Drunken Path um, block of the month block because we've had questions about that and I've got some new fabrics to show you. Only three today, let's move that to one side, but by um, popular demand. Hello Brenda in Kentucky. Um, Good, I'm glad you're better, Alan. Well, welcome back. Yes, Beverly, that is a new cushion behind me. That is your second project on the Half Yard Club. So it's Hawaiian applique. So there's a little bit of information about Hawaiian applique and where it comes from and um, a little tutorial on how to do your own designs. Um, and you've got the, the pattern for that one. So that one will be out on the 15th. And where's the other one? The one behind me here. Uh, will be coming out around about the same time. That's just a really simple one and it's an extra project for you because it matches the curtains from this month's main project for the Half Yard Club. Um, oh, I'm glad you like it, Leslie. Um, busy making the doll's house. Oh, Patricia. <gasps> With a new poodle puppy called Frida. Oh, I love the smell of new puppies. The best smell in the world. Um, hello, Lavinia, Wendy, Karen. Um, read it several times already okay let's let's do this let me show you the fabric first of all we've got faux leathers in stock um if you haven't seen these before we've been asked for them so many times um that we thought well why not so we've just got the three for you there is faux leather and there is faux leather this is faux leather some faux leathers can be very shiny and very stiff this one is incredibly soft um it has a knitted back which means it has a little bit of give to it in that direction. So if you wanted to make a jacket or the sleeves of a jacket or a skirt out of it, it's going to be great to wear. The beauty of this faux leather is that it is so soft. It's not shiny. Um, I think personally a lot of um, a lot of the very shiny ones and the very stiff ones can look cheap. This is so rich and expensive looking and it's and it's really not. It's absolutely gorgeous. Um, and again, it's just incredibly soft. Now, the manufacturers say that it's not washable. I have washed it on a 30 degree wash and it's fine. And you can iron it from the back. So don't touch the iron on the front. It's a PU, it will melt. But from the back, you can use a hot iron and steam it. Because when you get this home, it'll have a crease or two in it, but you can just steam that away. So don't worry about that. So it's easy to care for as well. So if you are bag making, if you're covering a chair, I've done a smocked cushion with this before now. I've made a skirt with it before now. Um, the only thing that I would suggest that you have to go with it if you don't have one already. So I was just trying to refresh the website. I don't know what's going on there. Um, is a, a walking foot or a non-slip foot. Walking feet tend to be a bit more expensive. So if you don't have either, invest in a non-slip foot. Because if you're sewing from the back, absolutely fine. 
if you're top stitching, it will <coughs> excuse me cause friction with the uh, with the underneath of your presser foot. So you need something to help make it glide. Um, you can. Um, who's who's what from? Who's it from, Debbie? I've, I think I've missed something. Let let me know. Um, sorry, who was that, Carol? Let me know. Let me know what you mean because I missed that bit. Um, no, I haven't got grey, Leslie. This one is a plum one. Um, <clears throat> no, you don't need a specific needle, Angela. Don't use a leather needle on it. I know it's tempting, and I have seen other people advise to use a leather needle, but you'll just leave holes in it. <clears throat> Gosh, excuse me. Frogs in the throat. Hmm. Sorry about that. Um, no, it doesn't crease easy, Jean, at all. Um, let me show you. So, no special needle. Oh, look, we've gone all out of focus. Come on, catch up. There we go. Um, I mean, it crumples. I've just given that a really good scrunch and it'll crumple. Give it a blast of steam from the back and then it'll um, that'll just melt away. Megan, I think that's coming out on the 15th. I think. Um, so, yes, it is piped. The fabric behind me for the for the green cushion is the cream um, cotton and bright green poplin. I think it's just green poplin. Um, yeah, it's quite striking, isn't it? And yes, there is piping on it. I've used eighth of an inch piping cord. Um, so and needles, no, Angela, you don't need special needle. Use a universal needle. If you're sewing this on top of layers of fabric, you may want to use a denim needle, which is a little bit stronger. Hello, Bernadette. Welcome back again. Um, this is a colour that we haven't stocked before, which is the tan, which I'm going to make, actually, um, the next Half Yard Club project, which will be an overnight bag out of tan and navy together, because I just think those are so classy together. And um, because you can mix and match with other fabrics as well. I'd suggest that if you're using a fine fabric with this, um, you put some quite firm stabiliser on the back of it. Um, so that's, that's the three colours that we've got for you. And again, steam them from the back. You can use a hot iron and steam on the back. And um, you can it's a bit of a wipe. Um, you probably never have to put this in the washing machine. If you do, just put it on a 30 degree wash. Um, but of course, it's, it's a wipe clean. But it's just beautiful to work with. So that's that's what we got. <gasps> hello, Mark. We were talking about you. We wondered where you were this morning. Um, hello, Anne in Yeovil. <gasps> Classic. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> um, yeah, that is. It is beautiful, and I'm glad you like the tan. I like the navy and tan together. I just think that's really classy. Um, I mean, we can get more colours if you want it. But we haven't had it in stock for quite a while. It tends to be one of those wintry type of fabrics, I think, this one. Oh, hi, Fee. Uh, Sylvie's out of hospital after a hysterectomy. Need to rest now. Sit here. And... Oh, you've, dis you've disappeared. Come on back, Sylvia. Um, oh, thank you. Do you, you sit there and have somebody bring you a cup of tea and a biscuit and enjoy? Um, hi Mary, can anyone help, says Anne. I've tried Debbie's directions for shearing, but mine comes out too loose. I've turned up the tension, stitch length and steam. Promise my granddaughter a sheared top, where am I going wrong? Has anybody else had the problem? Because if you followed all of the long stitch length, highest possible tension, the only other thing I can think, Anne, um, that might help, and this isn't really a solution, is if you pull the end of the elastic through and gather it up that way. Because it doesn't sound like you're going wrong. And anybody else got any advice for Anne with shearing? Anybody had the problem with it and you've managed to rectify it? Um, hello, Hassana in Beirut. Is it the first time you've been here? Welcome along. I don't recognise your name. Um, oh, what company made it? The, the faux leather? No idea. No idea who actually manufactured it. We buy from wholesalers. So I, I, don't, I don't know. I'm afraid I don't even know what country it's made in. Um, Alexa. Oh, if I say Alexa, everybody's Alexa to go, how can I help? Um, but hello, Alexa, in, um, in Bowral, is that in New South Wales? Welcome along. Um, mouse is there in the bag. Is it there? I didn't. Oh, there it is. <laughs> I, don't, I don't do the mouse. Let's have a look. 
at this drunkard's path. Now this, this is from, if you're not aware, um, the block of the month from my Half Yard Sewing Club. And, <laughs> sorry Myra. Um, this is the quilt that you're going to be making. So let me show you this so that you know what we're talking about. If you don't know what I'm talking about. Um, so my friend Melissa designed this and actually made this one as well. And this is the block of the month for the Half Yard Club. So every month you will have your instructions to make one block. There's 11 in total. Because it's a Christmas quilt, she wanted you to spend the December making this up. So you will have your quilt ready by December. So I can't remember which ones we've done so far, actually. But your Drunkard's Path, which is this month, is this one here. So you must be halfway through making this one already. So that's the quilt. And it's gorgeous, isn't it? I think it's been her most popular one yet. Melissa designs all of the blocks of the month for me. Um, you'll have four of them if you go to the Half Yard Club because they never get taken down. And I'm going to show you, actually. Morning, Lisa, you're right. Um, let me just take that down there. Mary had the same problem. Um, oh, Linda's been out with the dogs. Are you winding the elastic too tightly? Um, hello, Sabina in South Australia. Right, let me just move that over there and we'll have a look at the instructions. There we go. So this is Half Yard Sewing Club. If you, I'm, I'm assigned in here, so this is what you're going to see when you remember. Um, those are your curtain projects for this month. And this is your block five, Drunkard's Path at Christmas. Um, so you'll have your template, what you'll need, and then all of your cutting instructions, okay? And it's, it's, it is actually quite simple. Now, Melissa's saying the most important thing is to make sure that you have a quarter of an inch seam allowance here. Okay, so uh, you, she said you shouldn't need to trim this down to size, um, but you do need that quarter of an inch seam allowance because that's going to mean that your points here will match up perfectly. Um, these are the ones that you've been making so far. So these, these are your pictures. That's going to be a lovely one, isn't it? It's very different to the Christmas fabrics that, um, that Melissa used. But these look fabulous. I can't wait to see your quilts all made up. Okay, so that's you. So um, Melissa says optional fabric glue pen. I think you might find that really useful, um, as would your spray starch as well. And then you've got a list of all of the different ones that you need to cut. So you will have right at the beginning of the block of the month um, a chart which will identify um, uh, your reds, your first, second, third greens, your metallics and, and, and all of the different colours. So just go through really carefully and cut out all of the ones that she's suggesting here. Okay. And then they're all basically made in the same way. So that's the finished block. So when you just went through those instructions and you're seeing that you're going to need two of red one with background, that's that one and that one, that one and that one. So you can see where all of the individual blocks are. And then you've got the green and the red and the green and the white and a metallic and a green and a green and a white. So that, that's kind of maybe made it a little bit clearer about how that's made up. So cut these pieces as accurately as you can. Now I should be perfectly honest with you. My printer's broke, <laughs> so it's gone off for, for a service and I'm not going to get it back for a few days. So I'm hoping that these are the right size. Now, when you put them together, they look like they're not going to fit, but they don't go together like that. Um, so what we're going to do is to take a sharp pair of scissors. I'm just going to switch my iron on as you're watching there, so bear with me a sec. And we're going to snip into the seam allowance. Now I'm going to use a quarter of an inch seam allowance around here. 
So you're going to snip within that quarter of an inch seam allowance and make little snips all the way around. And this is going to help the seam to sit flat because we don't want any puckers in here. We want a nice smooth line. Okay, so again, take your time with it. You've got quite a few of these to do. So th this whole thing actually isn't something to be rushed, is it? That's why it's a block of the month. You've got a year to make it. So take your time making the little snips. Then I'm going to fold this in half to crease the centre of the curved line. Like so. And I'm going to fold this one in half to mark the centre of the curved line. Hi Angela. Like so. And then these two are going to go right sides together with that point matching. Oh, now I'm going to put some glue on there. So Melissa says this is optional, but um, I really do think you'll find this helpful. If not, then you're going to use lots of pins. So let's do both. So again, match up the creases of the center points. And then we're just going to open out those snip marks that we've just made until the edges meet. And say so if you're if you're not gluing, then lots of pins in there to hold it. And just match up the edge, take your time with it. Until those ends meet there. Okay. And then we're going to sew this with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. I think definitely use the glue Shirley. It's worth buying it. Leslie's, uh, other Leslie may say she made, um, used plenty of pins to do mine. Who's that found the glue pen really helped? Um, Sylvia. Um, Janet did it this week. Oh, right, okay, I'll just do it there. Uh, Jane would also recommend the glue pen too. Right, okay. So a quarter of an inch seam allowance. I'm not going to measure this exactly. I haven't got my quarter of an inch foot on there, but. And then just take your time, use a small stitch. So I've got a, a 2.2 on this machine. You'll find that your curve is easier to make a curve with a smaller stitch. And just make sure that the area that you're sewing is so I'm just I just oh there you go I've just knocked my screen off um, the area that you're sewing so your stitch line here is flat because this is all going to pucker up so that's all gathering I don't want that to gather underneath the needle okay so that's what it looks like now so when you open that back out and press it and um, you've got that really lovely shape. So again, it's sewing together a concave and a convex arc. I know that's not exactly a quarter of an inch, I say I hadn't got my foot on, but I hope, that's, I hope that explains how to do it. So that one would then be that square there. So make up all of those first, and again, when you sew these together, you'll have your quarter of an inch seam allowance across there, and when that's sewn, you'll get that perfect point in the centre. So hopefully that's explained that one. Um, I haven't got any of the other blocks with me to do a pinwheel at the moment, I'm afraid, but um, we could maybe have a look at that for next week if you want me to have a go. Um, Oh, Janet was, had a 66th birthday last week. Happy birthday for last week, Janet. Um, Colette says I made it look easy. I, it's, it's not actually that difficult. I think when you initially, if you've not done anything like that before, you'll hold the two arcs together and think, I've cut it out wrong, they don't match. But when you see how, you say, you've got a concave and a convex being sewn together, then um, 
that's that's why it looks as though it doesn't match up, but they, they should do. Um, right, let's put that back in there. Um, that's all right, Karen. Oh, Cher Caveau, it's her birthday to what you're going to do for your birthday, Cher. Something really glamorous. Um, Margaret's having a break while I get my sewing air back to normal after a jubilee. That must have been a heck of a jubilee weekend. Um, <laughs> still not got back to normal again. Um, hardest part was the cutting out. If that's not accurate, you don't get a good result. Absolutely, Leslie. You do need to be really, really accurate when you're cutting. Um, do you know, I, if you have, if, you, if you're handy with a rotary cutter and you go for a 28 millimeter one, which is a little tiny one, you might find that easier to cut the curves. Might have to practice a bit, but that's uh, I find it easier to cut with a rotary cutter because I can just press it down and curve it round, then pick it up and try and cut like that with a pair of scissors. So that that might help. Um, right, should we make a bag? I rather I fancied um, a bag with a long strap and knots at the end of it. So I, I was um, I was planning on coming down here at a ridiculous hour this morning. And um, got, got a bit got a bit waylaid, so it didn't quite happen. So I've cut out my bits. <laughs> Normally, something like this, I would I would have made one up first of all, but I haven't. So I was practically starting from scratch. Now I'm using um, the Lady McElroy viscose um, which you wouldn't normally think of using for a bag and uh, because it's very very fine it's very floppy so I put some G700 onto the wrong side of it now you could use um, a, um, a fusible foam not a foam not for this one a fusible fleece like your um, H600 and H it's for what, what are H H six thirteen H six forty, um, but I wanted this one to be finer than that because I'm actually going to put a couple of pleats in the top to give it a bit of shape. So I wanted it to be quite floppy. Um, G seven hundred is a woven interfacing, yeah, the kind of thing that you'd use on on collars and pockets and plackets and things like that if you're dressmaking. Um, but it's perfect for things like this because it stops the fabric from twisting. Have I got some? I haven't actually got any without the interfacing on to show you. I can't get that off. Um, the fabric is quite fine and floppy. So do be careful, even when you're ironing this onto the interfacing, that you don't push it because it will twist quite easily. Um, so try and keep that as flat as you can. And this is the Lewis and Irene, uh, not Lewis and Irene, Lady McElroy Bohemian fabric, which is in the um, the new arrivals on the website. Do you know, it's funny. Um, I, so I I don't I don't know what Kim orders most of the time. It just arrives, and it's a, it's always a pleasant surprise. Do you know what they did last night? We had a delivery of fabric about nine o'clock at night and um, they didn't ring the doorbell or anything so um, we didn't know that it was there and uh, Tyler actually went out last night and he came back in just after nine o'clock so, and there's a load of fabric on the street and they just left just left it on the street if he hadn't have gone out it'd still be there now we don't go out that side of the house very often anyway um, that's by the way yeah, with this one um, Kim was here when it arrived and when she opened it she just went that's mine <laughs> oh, okay she says oh, I've ordered that for me I don't need 100 meters but I've ordered it for me so uh, actually she hasn't taken off what she wants yet she's no idea what she's going to make with it but yeah that's mine anyway let me measure these for you because I haven't even measured what I've cut yet I'm not going to put any pockets or anything like that um, so, oh, Alana, I did get your message. Sorry, I just haven't had a chance to reply. Um, Alana wants a hand sewing project to take on holiday with her. So, has anybody got any ideas what Alana can hand sew? Right. Um, so, that's 16 inches by 12, 12 and a half inches. Um, I'm going to do one slightly bigger, I think, for YouTube. Maybe not. Um, so, one, uh, the front, one for the back. And then two lining pieces all cut to the same size and i'm going to make the handle just one long strap and this is the width of the fabric which is um 150 centimeters which i think is 60 inches i will take the selvages off those in a sec and i've got two smaller pieces which are five inches by seven inches when i do the um the youtube um video 
which I'm going to film just after this. It'll take me the rest of the day to edit it and and, um, and render it and upload it. So it'll be on later on this afternoon. I'll put all of the measurements underneath in the description box in centimetres and in inches as well. Buying fabric and sewing fabric are two different hobbies. <laughs> I would agree with you on that one. <laughs> um, right, so let's put the pleats in this first of all. Right. So I'll need to do all four pieces. And again, let's do one there. So I folded that at four inches. So if you, if you look at four inches and then five inches and fold the four over the five, that will do nicely. That's the beauty of making your own bag so you don't have a pattern to follow. So you can make these any size you like. And same from this side, so take the four and then an inch and fold over that side. So those pleats should be the same distance from each side. And we'll need to do this on all four pieces. Right. You could do English paper piecing just with squares, Alana. If you don't have any uh, of the shape templates, you could make your own quite easily like that. Um, so we're going this way, aren't we? So four inches to five. The pillow with the green applique, Sherry, is um, the second members project from the Half Yard Club. So that's Hawaiian applique. So you need to be a Half Yard Club member and you'll get that on the on the 15th of the month. So I'm just making sure that these are the same size. Um, it's nice, isn't it? It's got piping around it as well, and it's got a, a concealed zip, not an invisible zip. Do oh, bear with me. Oh, no, I didn't. I just put a regular zip in the back of that one. So that's it. And I think the piping really finishes it off. So it's a really simple project. It's really fun to make as well. Um, but in the um, instructions, I also explain how I designed the template and how you can design your own as well. So if you wanted to do a similar, but using a different pattern, or make lots of them in different patterns, then um, I'll show you how to do that as well. Tell you my secrets. Right. So I'm doing the same with the lining, so no, nothing, nothing new, just matching it up as best I can. I think it's colours, isn't it, Carol, that has uh, an Irish look, but no, that's, it's a traditional Hawaiian method of quilting um, or creating a patchwork for a, a applique for a quilt, um, and they would have one huge design right in the centre. Um, a lot of the time you've, you'll see them in red, red, red with a white background, is very popular, but I just thought we'd use the technique and make something small and uh, a little more achievable than a huge quilt. All right. So again, all I'm doing is just matching all of these up. And I guess on your bag, it doesn't matter if look, I'm a little bit out there. It doesn't really matter. Because um, when it's all sewn together, we can make adjustments there. Uh, Jean had a delivery in a big brown bin on top of grass cuttings, complete with slugs and said, oh, <laughs> oh gosh, why, why would they do that? All right, Megan, would your dad do that? Megan's dad works for, for DPD. I can't see. They, they did deliver, it was an Amazon delivery to Kim's, I think I've told you before. Um, she lives in um in a flat there's two th just two levels uh three levels and it's one of those where um you've got quite a grand set of steps going up to the door and then there's basements underneath one of those type of things in in london um and at the top of the stairs there's a um a, a, oh a mat that you wipe your feet on um which is about that big and they would put this parcel which is about this big on top of the steps and put the mat over the top so nobody could see it at all. Right, I am just going to sew 
I thought I was going to sneeze. I'm going to top stitch a couple of inches just down each one of these pleats so I can take the pins out and that'll hold it in place. And you know, I kind of like the way that it's automatically bowing out a little bit as well, but let's keep that straight. And now makes it less complicated. No, Megan's dad wouldn't do that. Right. So I'd, uh, for perfection, I'd measure and, and mark the two inches down here, but I think we can gauge where two inches is going to be as long as it's the same on each one. So, oh, Cher lives in one of those too. So we're, we're in good company. Um, no, that's straight because I've got the mark there. So I'm just doing that. And again, on all four pieces. Oh, he doesn't deliver what's on customer services. That's that's why he's not going to chuck something in the bin. Oh, Tracy's just joined the Half Yard Club. We should have a um, um, a, a drum roll or a, or a, a jingle when people join the club, shouldn't we? Ta-da! Welcome along, Tracy. Why did you join? Was it a specific project that you want to make? Or do you just fancy being part of a really friendly professional club? got so many um, club members now and you are all over the world and the, you know we have the um, have an ask a member page let me show you because we're still open there aren't we um, let me just move this over here and do that um, so up here we have ask a member and I know it's it's getting so busy on here so you write your question and uh, I, I answered that one um, but Anne's on there regularly, Davinia is, Joan is, I know um, there's Mary and Denise and Alice, Angela, there's Megan wants Father's Day gift ideas and Carol, Leslie, uh, Laura's a, um, a regular, Nancy in America um, there's Sally and Debs and Sharon and Veronica. We've got 85 pages of questions. Um, I was going to say, I, I, over the last year or so, it's gone from having an occasional comment to a constant stream of, um, how do I do this? Or I've made this, or I'm, re I'm really proud of that, or where can I buy this from? And you know, I love to see that because we're all interactive. And if I can't get to the, um, the PC every day to keep on top of it, there's always somebody there that answers the questions, which is which is really nice. So occasionally you'll see the um, the girls from marketing. So you might see Sophie, um, whoops, or Claire answering some of your questions, and it'll it'll just come up half your old club. But I think I love that. Love seeing that. Um, love Anita loves everything. She binges binge watches late at night on her iPad with headphones. <laughs> Um, oh, Christine's having a go at making Maddie. Um, oh, hi, Jilly. Um, back when top was fine. Oh, love it. Love it when you chat amongst yourselves. Um, she joined, she joined, she's happy as can be. Now she's glad to be a part of the sewing family. That's pretty smart for this hour on a Saturday morning. Right, we've got these. So let us sew them right sides together. Oh, I'm going to put a magnetic snap on this one. The one that I'm going to do on YouTube, I rather thought we'd have a flap on it, but this one, I'm just going to put a snap on the lining. Right in the middle. So let's fold this in half so I can mark the center point. Which is, I see I haven't got my pleats exactly right, and you, do you know, I don't care. And I'm going to measure <coughs> an inch from the top to fit this one. <coughs> Gosh, excuse me. So, oh, oh, there we go. Use the proper tools, Deborah. Um, so just an inch from the top. Put a couple of marks there. I am going to put a little scrap of fabric just on the back of that. Um, I'm just going in the bin, just a minute, there we go. 
just make that a little bit stronger. I'll do that on both pieces actually. So the glue pen, to hold that in place. Megan has got no idea what to sew today. Why do you make a bag? You never go wrong with a bag. So that's just going to go on the back of where I'm putting the clasp. And take a sharp pair of scissors or a quick on pick, which I know exactly where it is now. And make two little incisions. Then one half goes through here. Um, the barbecue tool set. Yes, Amanda, that's a good idea. That is in... Um, oh, I've got it here, I think. There we go. Outdoor living. Oh, it's like we rehearsed it, isn't it? Um, so outdoor living and it's um, there. Look, barbecue tool roll, and that's made with um, uh, fusible foam, so it's really nice and, and sturdy as well. Oh, there you go. So that's that. Okay, so the prongs go through the holes, and then pop the back on, squish it out. Caroline says, love all your bags and tutorials. I've made a few tote bags, reversible bags, a quilted tote, and next going to be making a bowling bag. I do make a lot of bags. You know, and not because I need a lot of bags. I like making bags. Um, like with this one, it's, um, I like the figuring out. So that, the actual bag bit, um, I have made similar before like this but i haven't made a handle like this one before so i just thought i'll try something a little bit different that's what i like about bags no two will ever be the same as what i like about bags is there a comparison chart that we could use for various stabilizers i don't i don't know lynn um i i've never used pelon i know it is available over here but i'm, I'm i've always used valiseline so you tend to stick with what you're used to um so i don't know if there is kind of a a conversion chart anywhere. I haven't seen one. Carol's addicted to making bags. Going to start the box craft out. Um, I like that one, Biz. It's, it's really quite sturdy as well. All right, so second half of the snap goes in here. And that goes in there. And then we'll sew these right sides together. Mary Bennett's a bag maker. Oh, I've missed your comments, Marilyn, but I hope you get better soon. Uh, Claire's taking or oh, making dog support harnesses, a rehab and lifting sling. Oh, um, in different sizes to donate to my vets as they like my homemade ones I made after my. Oh, that's a nice idea, Claire. Uh, right, I'm just going to move. All of these pins out of the way. There we go. So I'm going to sew these right sides together and I'm going to leave a gap in one side so I can turn it the right side out. Um, let's pop that over there. Thank you, Lisa. So I leave the top open and I'm just going to use the edge of my foot as a seam allowance, which is a little bit over a quarter of an inch. Whoops. All right. Now you could curve, oh, gap. You could curve the bottom of this if you wanted to. I'm going to leave mine pointed. I might square, mm. I might square the base off. See, this is what happens when you start sewing from scratch. Oh, I could do this, I could do this. So we'll see how it goes. We'll see how we are for time. We've got loads of so it's only 22. We've got loads of time. Um, right, like that. And down this side. Like so. And then we'll do the same with the outside pieces as well. And then we'll make up the handle because that needs to go on before we put this together. So that's the lining. Um, haven't made a weekend bag yet. 
There is, uh, Sarah, there's one on Hot Yard Club. Um, it's about that big. But the one that I'm doing for next month is going to be a proper big duffel bag. But I haven't made it yet. <laughs> um, yeah, better, better get on with that, hadn't I? And here's a video as well. Uh, Haley is currently making the quilted bottom tote bag with a letterbox pocket. First time using H640. I'm somewhat slower at it than you. Um, old practice. <laughs> the thing is, I, I, as I was saying earlier with the um, with the block of the month, sewing, sewing shouldn't be quick. It's it's relaxing and it's a pastime. And I know I've said it before, but they call it mindful. And I call it mindless because you just kind of drift into it. And if you're anything like me, by the time I finish something, I just want to start making the next one anyway. Hmm. Right. I'm going to see my granddaughter later. Oh, well, one month old granddaughter. Oh. Yeah, mine are, mine are all on holiday at the moment, so. Vienna for a day in Brighton and the other two are in Greece, having a wonderful time. Um, oh, Alan, thank you. Alan's just found a comparison chart for different wadding and fusible interfacing. I hope that helps. Um, where is it then? Can you, can you share a link, Alan, if you can? Making the tote bag with the ties of yours. Yes, that's... Um, that was another one I enjoyed making, um, Carol. So that's uh, that was YouTube. Was it YouTube? Yes, it was a YouTube one, wasn't it? Um, yeah, I enjoyed making that one. I really dislike pressure attack. Though you shouldn't be pressurised into sewing, should you? Because it's it's supposed to be a, a hobby, not a chore. Okay, I'm going to square the base a bit. Only a bit. So I'm putting my hand in there and squishing the seams so that they sit together. I'll just do this quickly because you've probably seen it a million times before um, and I'm just going to sew over there about an inch from the end. When I do the YouTube I'll make it um, a little bit more in depth and show how you measure it and all that kind of thing. I'll tell you what we've got. We've got a bob cam but no bob. Isn't that what's its law? Haven't had a bob cam for weeks. Bought a new one. Gary's been down and set it all up this morning. There it is, all ready for her, and there she is outside sitting in the sun. With Bert. You've still got the grand dog. Okay, so gone across the corners. The pleasure in sewing is a creative process and the joy of giving too. So right, Stephanie, absolutely right. Um, Tracy, do sell them, yes. If you... Um, I mean, anything like that, um, there's probably bags like this out there, I don't know, so I can't, I can't claim that it's an exclusive design. Well, I suppose I could. Um, but no, if you can make any money out of anything that that's I show you, then yes, you, you go ahead and you just, you just sell away. Um, I'll do the same with the base on this one. That's the same with anything in my books. If you, just be careful if you want to sell something that somebody else has designed. Um, certainly with um, a lot of dressmaking patterns, you're not allowed to sell them. And it should say that on the packaging. Um, with books, um, you'll probably find, um, it's called a disclaimer. There'll be a note somewhere in the book saying that if you want to make to sell any of the items, you need to get the permission of the author. Um, I say it in my somewhere actually, it must do. Because that's that's quite standard. Um. But of course I can't find it now. All right, all rights are reserved. No part of this book, text, photographed or illustrations may be reproduced or transmitted in any form. Oh, that's just reprinting them, so you can't do that. Readers are permitted to reproduce any of the items and patterns in this book for their personal use or for the purposes of selling for charity, free of charge and without prior permission of the publishers. Any use of the items or patterns for the commercial purposes is not permitted without prior permission of the publishers. So that's standard in books um, and what you would do is to get in touch with the publishers and then the publishers would get in touch with the author and the author would say yes or no to you selling what you make. So let's cut all of that out. I'm the author and you can sell anything that you make. I don't mind at all. Guess what? Here she is. 
Hello, Poppet. Hello. Were you sitting in the sunshine? That camera needs to go up a bit, doesn't it? Let me move the camera up a little bit. Are you a good girl? Because we can't see you there. We've missed off the top of your head. There you go. Hey, sweetie. I can do this now because I'm not, I'm not tied up anymore. Hello, gorgeous. Hello, you've been sitting in the sunshine. Have you? Have you been playing with Bert? Oh, I'll tell you what. Uh, we had... Um, I was going out um, yesterday. I went to the dentist. And if she knows I'm going out, she will... Um, She'll go in the garden. If she can get outside, she'll just go in the garden and not come in. Because then you can't go out, can you? Because the dog's out. Um, but she, all right, she went out in the garden and she was scratching at the plant pot. And uh, when I looked around the back of the plant pot, there was the tiniest, tiniest duck. OK, I love you too. Um, must have only hatched, only just hatched. So there's a tiny, tiny little duckling. So I don't know, can you see me there? Because I can't see what I'm doing. Um, so I thought best thing to do is to phone Hayley Smith. I don't know if you know Hayley Smith from Craft Yourself Silly, um, that's on her chanda. She, she keeps ducks and breeds ducks. Um, she's got some, some very new ones. So I phoned her up and I said, I found a duckling. What do I do with this duckling? Um, and she said, uh, nine times out of 10, the mum will come back for it. So leave it. Oh God, this tiny, 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 little tiny thing. Um, so we left it in the garden. And uh, within about an hour, there was this incredible quacking going on. And um, mum came back for it. And not only did she come back for it, underneath one of the bushes at the bottom of the garden was a nest with six babies in it. So she must have been there, must have been there nesting for ages. I didn't even know she was there. So, yes, yeah, so you found a duckling, didn't you? That was very exciting. I've got to do some sewing. I'm making a bag. I don't need a wash. OK. Right, let's get on with this. <laughs> I tell you what else we did yesterday. Um, <laughs> Gary's put a zip wire in the garden. <laughs> Woo. Um, right. Everyone says hi, Bobbin. I do have legs. I do. You don't see that very often, do you? Um, right. Bobbin is wonderful. She's <laughs> she's a big baby yeah i've never had a licky dog before janet she she's she just licks and she's got a very long tongue and you get very wet um a video with a men's apron i can put that on the list amanda i've not done that I've done a man's apron or an apron that a man could wear in that um that half yard oh sorry the sew outdoor living book but i haven't done a video for that all right let's chop off the corners here and then we'll make up the handle. Um, so, the shorter pieces I'm going to use to thread D-rings through. So these are actually a little bit, a little bit too long. I was going to fold them, but I'm not. I'm going to sew them into a tube. Um, so these are the. Um, no, Mary, I'm not tethered. I have freedom. I could, I could take that camera off and go anywhere with it. Um, I'm just going to sew these into a tube. So these strips are five inches by seven. They're going to be too long, but we'll cut those down in just a second. Um, oh, that's a good idea. Yes, I can split the screen because I can do wherever, wherever I've gone. I can do that, but she's gone now. So there's no, no point really. But nice to have a visit. Um, <laughs> Yes, so there must be a way that I can put Bobbin up there and keep this one big. I shall have a play with that, and good idea. Um, right, so let's sew this into a tube. The gardening apron, the half yard cloth. Thank you, Laura. I forget what I put on there. So, so many projects. A big screen and little Bobbin in there. Yeah, I'll, I'll have a play with that, Meg, and I'm, I know I can do it. Just need to sort it out. Um, I'm trying for the last time, everyone. Please, could you do a Wednesday technique session on different interfacings, waddings, etc.? Yes. Um, I, I've only got what I've got at the shop, Sarah. So I'll go down on 
Monday and pick some up. So we have H630, H640, fusible foam, G700, G250 and G200. I think that's all we've got. So I'll, I'll, I shall bring along a selection and we'll have a look on Wednesday. I hope I don't forget that one. Um, I have to go and meet my daughter. Oh, see you, Debbie. I'll see you again next time. When's the wedding? Next month, isn't it? Mm. Right, so this is going to be the long strap, which is very long, but remember I'm going to tie a knot in it, so that's going to make it a little bit shorter. So I'm going to sew this together into a tube. Um, but I'm going to sew across the corner, so let's whip off that selvage. And that one. And again, from, from the corner, I'm just going to round, I'm not going to mark it, I'm just going to make that a little bit round. And sew across there. I hope you can see what I'm doing. Right, so all the way down, but I need to leave a turning gap in around about the middle. Like this. I'll do just somewhere there and then so that can be about three or four inches or so we'll carry on so there we go washing on the way to Newquay from Scotland that's a drive oh, are you driving are you on the train that's a long way to go how long is that going to take you about I don't know six hours seven hours um Oh, welcome Sherry. Buy fusible back and then put it in the box and forget what type it is. <laughs> Duh, says Mary. <laughs> Duh. Um, that would be good for Wednesday Techniques video, but here in Australia we have fusible fleece, but the names and numbers, I guess I'll have to get something similar. Um, I can measure thicknesses, if that helps, Caroline. Um, I'm assuming that our fusible fleece is the same as your fusible fleece. Uh, polyester with knobbly bits on the back so you can iron it on. Um, back in stock soon, I'll keep checking. Oh, by, by the way, if you things that we have regularly on the website, so we'll always have your staples, you know, all of the interfacings and hardware and glues and all of that kind of thing. Um, and plain fabrics, always keep a, a, a stock of plain fabrics in. Um, pattern fabrics, as many as we can. Um, but when we sell out, you can, if you want to, go onto a waiting list. Um, I, I'm not sure how it's worded on the website. It's something like email me when back in stock or something like that. So when things do come back in stock, you'll receive notifications to say that they're back. Um, so that you can be the first to get in there and get hold of them before they sell out again. Like Laura did with the, with the seam roll. Um, so that, that's a good idea if you're waiting for something. So if you're out of HG2 glue, it's always on order. It'll only be out of stock for a few days. So, um, so I'm just curling the other end of that round. Let me show you. So I've just curved around the edge there. We'll chop that off. Um, so yeah, just put yourself on that waiting list and you'll get a notification. With patterned fabrics, we can't always get more stock of the patterned fabrics because um, patterns tend to be only manufactured once. And if they do remanufacture, they might change the colour slightly. Um, so it's not always possible to um, to get those back in stock again. Um, so yeah, just thought I'd let you know. And if you wanted to join the mailing list, um, we don't send out a lot, maybe once a month. But if there's anything happening, uh, if there's a sale on or anything like that, or we've got something new and fancy coming in, then Kim does the newsletters. And... Um, maybe one a month that's all you're going to get but if you sign up for that then you'll you'll get any news of anything new that's happening I was going to bring a knitting needle down to poke this through and I forgot so I haven't, I haven't got anything so I'm just going to poke it all through um, 
Can we get a link to the conversion chart mentioned? That that was Alan. So I've um, if if you're listening, Alan, have you got a link to that conversion chart? Um, from 19 minutes about wadding batting. Oh, oh, have I done that? <laughs> oh, apparently I've done that. Um, all these videos. I've got over 400 on YouTube. I forget what I've done. Uh, Lynn has put a link on Facebook to a video about interfacing, if that helps. Thank you very much. Um, Sherry's going to get a coffee. I think you do need a round of applause, Linda. Linda. Now I'm in trouble. Called, called Lisa Linda. Um, all right, let's just keep pulling that through. Knitting needle would normally be something that I'd use for this. The beautiful one, the pink and tropical leaves that you made during the drawstring back out of. So I missed the, I've missed the first one of that. Um, Sally says, it's windy in, is it Moray or Moray in Scotland? Have you got a tutorial on bagging out Roman blind making? No, I haven't, actually. That I do have a tutorial on YouTube for a Roman blind, but it's not a bagging out one. Um, that is something I'm looking at for a book, actually. I've had all my books jiggled about. So um, I've had one brought forward for next year, which is going to be on curtains, blinds and cushions. Um, a, qu a quick project, for a needle book with pockets and zips. Claire, I think that's a brilliant idea. I, I need to have um, a ruler would help, wouldn't it? But I mean, for goodness sake, that's right in front of me, Patricia, honestly. Um, I've come too far now. I should have done that earlier. Um, a man's tie is a good one. I've got a bow tie on the Half Yard Club. Not made a tie before. The best seat to sit on while sewing. I spend a lot of time making memory pairs. Leslie, I sit on. I can show you what I sit on. It's got a bit of support on the back, but I never use it. And I can adjust it to exactly the right height. And I have, I've got a few of these. So, because I've got the other machines down in the office. Um, so that's what I sit on. And I think by not having the back on it, you, you have to sit upright. But important that you have your arms at the right height for that. And let's just keep pulling this out. I can't do a tutorial in Spanish, Maman, because I don't speak Spanish. <laughs> I think that's what you're saying. Um, but you can use the translation thing, I think. Um, a man's hat. I did a man's beanie hat for Half Yard Club. Wooden spell is a good idea. A cravat. Oh, Susan's husband fancies a cravat. Is he, is he a bit posh? Oh, my cravat. Right, let's pull the end. I got there eventually. That was a bit like uh, watching paint dry, wasn't it? Okay, poke that end out. That's out. And I'm just going to give this a quick press. Oh, look, I'm getting really messy now. I hate that. Goes out the way. From here. And just iron that flat. That's better. Now, because this is the, um, oh, the strap that's going over my shoulder, I would need to sew the opening closed by hand, but I'm not going to do that now that uh, take a while and I don't think I've got any green cotton down here. Debbie no hablar espanol. <laughs> Shay, you obviously do. No, Spanish isn't, Spanish isn't my thing. Oh, there you go. The comparison chart is called the ultimate wadding guide that has the loft and shrinkage and max, maximum stitch distance on the comparison. Thank you, Alan. Um, Sherry sits on an antique organ chair, which is like a piano stool with a back. Very comfortable. That's a nice idea. Sewing up men's ties. Got a bag full of silk ones. Okay. Right. What's the right height to sit at? Um, I like to sit with my elbows at the same level as... I'd like to be a bit higher on this one, but I still won't go any higher. So that your arms are straight as you're sewing, so your elbows should be about the same height as the bed of your sewing machine is recommended um, and that way because if you're sitting too low you're going to hunch and that's not very good for you at all 
so yes, yeah, a nice, nice high, nice high stool. Um, can you advise people that people can't make money from making products from licensed fabric? Yep, yeah, that's true, Elizabeth, as well. Um, li and any kind of some licenses, um, you can buy permissions for it. It's ever so expensive. Um, but for the for the majority, if you're buying licensed fabric, you can't sell it. Um, no, you can't with Disney, which is a shame, isn't it? Coffee. Oh, thank you. Sorry, I might have spilled a bit. I came in on my zip wire. <laughs> <laughs> They did hear about my zip wire. They did hear about your zip wire. It's just a pity I couldn't play the video in. <laughs> <laughs> this zip wire literally goes from the top of a tree on one side of the garden to the corner of my studio. It's the whole length of the garden. We've got a very I big went garden. Past the window, <laughs> <laughs> yes, okay. <laughs> Gary put it up yesterday, and I. <laughs> it's, it was a little bit heavy for it, so <laughs> when he came down to land, um, he kind of skidded on his backside across the floor. It's hilarious. <laughs> but I sent the video to, um, we've got one of these family um, <laughs> WhatsApp pages, and uh, everyone's coming over for the, the girl's birthday in, at the end of August. And so this is what we're going to be doing in August. I think they can't wait. <laughs> Hi, Zainab. I'm very good, thank you. Right, let's pop that there. Okay, so um, I'll do that one in just a second. So I'm going to pop the lining. Let's turn this bag the right side out. And there we go, press you out, press that. And then this is going to go inside can you see what I'm doing? Inside the lining, right sides together. And I'm just going to match up the seams. But I'm going to put the straps in before we sew this one. Like so. And this one. Like so. So they should be, they should measure the same. We're going to sew around the top in just a second. But these little tabs here are going to go on the side and that's, I'm going to put some D-rings on there. So I did say that they're a little bit long, so I'm going to cut that down, I think, about there. So let's chop an inch off. Um, so these now measure six inches in length. I think that'll be fine. And I'm going to take two D-rings and thread each one through the D-rings. Amanda's going to hand over a bunch of fabrics and scraps that I'm done with to a friend who makes crowns out of discarded materials. That's interesting. So that's going to gather it quite nicely because the D-rings are only an inch and this is wider. And this is going to go over that side seam with that on the top. Still much in the seams. <laughs> Alan was on a zip wire ride, fell over and landed in a pond because I let go of the handle too soon. Was that recently, Alan? <laughs> right, so let's do this. There we go. So that goes through there. And that goes there. I did both sides of the magnetic snap. So on each side of the lining. I did I did do that. And that's again ends go together here. Like that. And like that. Then we're going to sew all the way around the top. So I'll just move that coffee out of the way before I spill it. Go there. Bit hot at the moment. Right, so we're going to sew all the way around. Um, ideally, when when you've measured this and done it all proper, like um, your pleats will match up as well. But it doesn't really matter if they don't, does it? Okay, so let's just sew around there. Um, 
Why are you putting two D-rings on? Oh, all will be revealed when I put the strap on. It's going to hold the strap in place better than just having one on there. Basically. All right. So, let's do that. Oh, just make sure that side bit's straight. I think it's going to work. So when, um, if you weren't watching right at the beginning, um, normally if I'm making something new like this, I will actually make it up first, so I know it's going to work. Didn't have time this morning. So it's, this is kind of um, winging it, as they say. Mm. But it'll be fine. Mm -hmm. He's sitting on a stool, never got shoulder ache and thought of putting a soft cover on it. That's a good idea. Um, no, I'm not doing this so that you can adjust the length of the snap. I'm doing it so that I'm uh, using 2D rings so that I can make it more secure. And I think it looks nice. Right, so let's take out the pins and turn this back through again. And we'll sew the opening closed. Normally I'd change some green thread to do that because um, it's really stand out in white, but it'd be all right for now. I tell you what, I do have a green Sharpie somewhere. I don't know if I've got it here, actually. I do. So a tip for you. Sharpie doesn't tend to wash out, so if you've got um, a very different coloured thread, no reason why you can't just kind of colour over it. I know you see the line, but it doesn't stand out as much as the white stitching. Just, just a thought. Let's pop this inside and see how we're looking. Oh, I'm loving it. I'm going to just press this. So I've got the seam at the top. And then I'm going to top stitch around there as well. I don't think it needs a flap, you know. I was saying earlier, I think they, I thought with the, the YouTube video, I might put a flap on it, but I don't think it needs it. So let's just pull this out. and just carefully go all around the edge. Does it need top stitching? Yes, it does need top stitching. Right, so I think we'll use the free arm on the sewing machine. To sew around there. So that comes off. Oh, I'm glad you like it, Jane. You, you never really know what it's going to look like when you start doing something like this. <laughs> when you're not following a pattern, you're just kind of making it up as you go. And it's, um, it's always quite nice when it works, because it doesn't always. So I'm just top stitching all those layers together around the edge. Should I go a bit out of focus there again? I don't know where these threads come from, you know. Let's just snip that off. They go really well. There's so many colours in this fabric, I was a little bit hard pushed as to what to choose because red would look nice, any shade of yellow, orange, brown, um, jade, pinks, peaches. I, I just had rather a lot of green, so I thought I'll use that up. They did, they've, they've made it quite a roomy bag. Um, Laurie says that the pleats really add a great touch. It means you've got quite a big bag but a smaller opening. Maybe I've made these a little bit shorter, I think. Okay. So that's that. And then for this strap, I'm going to go through, Uncle, let me figure this one out, through there around the ah that way so through one or through the middle 
Have I done that the wrong way? Yes, I have. Let's go through both of them and then back through one. And that makes it nice and secure. So you can adjust the length of the strap. Let's make sure that's not twisted. But you'll have to undo it and re-knot it every time you do that. That's going to go back through there. So then you can pull that to the length that you want it to be. And then that's, that's nice and stable, but I am going to tie a knot in that as well. And a knot in that one too. Carol says it reminds her of a 1970s bag. It does actually, doesn't it? Is it the fabric or the knots and the style? And that's done. I'm really pleased with that. It's um, it's kind of what I what I had in mind. I said, but without trying it, I wasn't quite sure what it was going to turn out like. I think that one needs to be a bit longer. Um, yeah, Connie says uh, she loves the colours. It gives it a summery feeling. It does, doesn't it? Makes you wish you were at the beach with the grandchildren. Alexis says she loves that with the knots. Is that, is that rain? Oh my gosh, it's raining. Oh, I was going to spend some time in the garden with the dogs. Not now, I'm not. So that's that's that. That's what really well, hasn't it? I like seeing the. Oh, it didn't go back through both knots on that. Um, the two uh, D rings as well. It looked just a little bit different. No, thank you, Lisa, for today. Very much. Um, so back through there, and then back through the first one. That's it, and then knot it. I'm glad you like it. Thank you. Um, yeah, actually, the, the fabric is a, a, um, a bohemian fabric. I can't remember. It's called bohemian something or other. So it, it does look very bohemian, doesn't it? So that's that. Um, and again, you can lengthen and shorten the straps as you want to as well. Um, OK, I shall do a video for it now um, in a different fabric. And again, I'll put all of the measurements and stuff um, in centimetres and in inches in the description box underneath the video on YouTube. But that'll probably be later on this afternoon, maybe much later on this afternoon, because they take ages to do. So I'm glad you liked it. Um, I will be back again on four o'clock on Wednesday. We are going to be, I was going to do, what foot was I going to do on Wednesday? I was going to talk sewing machine feet on Wednesday. And I can't remember which one I was going to do, but we will have a look. Um, Jenny, that's a good idea. Use your own fabric and make, and make a patchwork one. Brilliant idea. Um, we will do something on interfacings as well. I'll get hold of some of those. Um, righty ho, let me just check down here. We are fine and dandy. Um, I think dinner flap two would work. Yeah, I think mm, mm, the t I, I don't know if it would interfere. I could do a flap on, on the YouTube one, couldn't I? I had, I had planned to do that. Just looking at it like this, I didn't know if it was necessary, but we could, we could do that. Do that on YouTube. Um, oh, something's not responding there. You're going to have to wait a minute because my, my software that, that brings up that... Oh, there we go. Um, see you again on Wednesday at 4 o'clock wasn't responding for just a second. And we have to finish off with a see you again Wednesday at four o'clock, don't we? Okay, that's back again. Um, good night from Australia, says Samantha. Have a happy birthday, Cher Kravu. Um, thanks, Debbie. Thanks, Ellen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So enjoy the rest of your weekend, whatever it is you're up to. And if you can join me on Wednesday at four o'clock in the afternoon, um, that would be very nice to see you there. So you take care. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.